Hey folks, welcome to my YouTube channel. I know it's been a long break since I last posted a video on this topic. And I had been linked involved with other work and trying to get myself back up in the meantime. And in this video, we're going to catch up and continue with what we were doing in the last videos. So we talked about Kong Gate API Gateway and architecture. So you have some idea of how that is working. And now in this video, we're going to actually implement that gateway and see it in action. So what we're going to cover in this video is setting up the Kong API Gateway. Also explore what options you have to do it. And then we'll look at what are different ways to configure your Kong API gateway. So you already know about the admin API route, right? So you know how you can create objects like consumers, services, and routes using an admin API. We also look at another option, which is the CRD of CRD way. That's something which we're going to explore. Apart from that, we'll look at what Kubernetes ingress is. Like I'll just give a very short introduction of what Kubernetes ingress is and how it relates to routes in Kong, right? So how do you, you know, create routes for Kong using Kubernetes ingress? That's also something we'll look at. And then finally, we'll look at basic authentication plugin. It will be a very basic plugin on how you can, you know, add some kind of security to your services. That's what we'll look at. And then we'll try to test a service. So we'll, we'll spin up a Hello World service and then we'll apply this plugin, this basic authentication plugin to your service and try to access it using some credentials there as well. And so let's just start, let's get started with the first one. So prerequisites for this step is you already know about the architecture you already know that in order to implement the design patterns like offloading design pattern you have to use plugins right so in order to add authentication or the kind of rate limiting and other stuff you have to use some called some kind of Kong plugins so in this video we're going to continue and build upon that as well so you're also familiar with the commands that you use to operate your Kong gateway so remember we had a URL at the of the admin API and that 8001 port was there we used that particular port and we used to post to different endpoints, like say the consumer endpoint or the route endpoint, the service endpoint, and that is how you create the objects in Kong. That is the way we should already know. Right? This is this is something which you are already familiar with. And then after that, we'll look at how we can do things in Kubernetes. So first of all, you have to first make sure where you want to install Kubernetes. So is it a local deployment or a public cloud? In this example, as I already mentioned, we'll be using Azure Kubernetes service, and then we'll be creating a cluster there and doing all of our Kong deployment over there. So let's just go over to the uh, portal first of all. Yeah, so let's just check out. I already have a cluster running, so I'll just show you. Okay, I have to add an alias first for kubectl. So this just makes my life easier, so I'll just put it there. Now let's just go and check out the nodes. So I already have one cluster set up, a very basic cluster, and then we're going to do, you know, do all sorts of experiments only on this cluster here. So this is the node which I have. So this is one node cluster. And let's look at documentation for how we can start installing Kong on Kubernetes. So we have three options here, YAML manifest, Helm chart and customer. So essentially what we do have is a YAML file, but it can be used as a Helm chart as well. So let's look at this particular command here. So as you can see, we can just apply it straightforwardly by just visiting this URL. So let me check out what this URL has, right? So that will help us uh, understand what configuration we are actually applying. Right, so you can see that there are multiple uh, different kinds of uh, objects applied here. So there is a namespace at for top, which is the Kong namespace, and then you have a other custom resource definition. So CRD. So we're talking about more about CRDs later on. So there's a Kong cluster plugin CRD defined here. So there are all sorts of things. It's such a huge file, right? So to give you an idea, let us let us search for say environment or uh, something like that. Yeah. So there you can see we have multiple environment fields all around the place. Right, so maybe maybe what we can instead search for is database. Right, database. Yeah, so there you can see you have some sort of environment what you call Kong database and it's turned off, right? So this this gives an idea that this is instead this is in, this gives an idea that this is a DB less you know deployment of Kong, which means that it does not use database in this case. But you can also have other configurations where you enable databases on your own. So let's just look at one repository here, which is the Kubernetes Ingress Controller. And there you can see you have multiple YAML files like this. So you have say all-in-one DBLess enterprise, all-in-one DBLess. So the one which we're looking at right now is maybe all-in-one DBLess. Right? So if you want an you know, post trace, so you can also use this, this particular YAML configuration. And then you look at this place, let's, let's just search for database again. Right, so there you can see the value for Kong database is post trace instead of being off. Right, so that is that is one difference which you can see here. And similarly, you can add other details, other settings which are you know directly uh, second here, which configure Postgres itself. So maybe I'll just show you. Yeah, there it is. So you have other Postgres settings here. 
So that is how you configure your, your YAML manifest. This is this is this is one example of what configuration can be made. Other configurations are there, like which which we we'll look at when you look at the Helm chart. So let's just go over to the next way of deploying it. So you have a Helm chart as well available with Kong, and you can add it using this particular website. So let's just visit this website as well. Let's just go over here. Let's see what this holds. All right. So this is the Helm charts website here. Now, uh, instead I'm looking for is the repo. Let's just look at uh, there it is. Yeah, documentation. So I just wanted to look at the YAML value, uh, sorry, values dot YAML file because that gives us an idea of how this thing is configured. So if I go over to maybe this particular uh, section, then I have this is very scrolling down. There you go. This YAML values dot YAML file. So this will this will allow me to see what are different options available to me in in this case. For example, let's just again search for database. Right, so database is turned off in this case. So again, if you want to configure Postgres here, you just state database equal to Postgres, and then you'll add some other inert variables which correspond to specific Postgres settings. For example, what is the user, what is the password, and all, all of those things can be added here as well. So these are some changes that you can make. Apart from that, what other changes you can do is let me let me just first implement the helm chart version of it right so let's just say i want to install uh generate name is required and then i'll add say kong slash kong so i'm trying to install uh, a deployment of kong using helm all right so this will this will give you an idea of how we can you know make changes to different yaml files and then we can understand like what are what are we absorbing right now and what we want and how we can make that change using the values of yaml file so when once this installs we'll look at you know how to make the change. So yeah, this is installed now. Now let us let us check for what services are deployed currently. Right. So you can see you have a Kong proxy which is being set up pretty really fast, load balancer, an external IP is pending, so forth. So if if you want to imagine if you want to imagine more from what we already know right now is that we can use the admin API to make changes to uh, our Kong deployment, right? So but I don't see any admin api being exposed in this place right so you can't see there's there's no way to access the kong admin api because since it's kubernetes i need to have some kind of a service external service or other kinds of service that expose the admin api so first off the bat we can see if that is missing so let us first check out the yaml file and see if we have some option for some kind of an admin api right so let us let's keep searching for admin so yeah there you can see we have a section called admin. It says enable creating a Kubernetes service for admin API. So this is exactly what we want, right? So it's enabled. It's, uh, the default value is false here. So what we need to do is create, make it enable as true, and then set the type of service we want. So I would want say a load balancer because I want to access it externally and not directly inside it. It's enabled. It's, it's not enabled by default because this is accessed internally by Kubernetes and not allowed uh, to access by us. And that is the general practice in this. We'll talk more about this later. So yeah, if I have to make admin API available externally, what I have to do is make that change in it. Plus, if I want Postgres, I will have to make another change in the environment variable. So these are some of the changes. And I do have a, another YAML file here. So let us just see if I have uh, the Kong values. So I've saved it already in this YAML file. So yeah, this is this is the file which I see. So you can see I have made enabled as true and type as load balancer. So this is what I wanted and this is what I did and you can also change the service ports and which you remember we have uh, the HTTP port at 8001 for admin API that is configured here. You can also modify it right from here. So this is this is the idea. Okay, so now let us uh, upgrade my Helm installation and I'll upgrade it using the file which I have shown you right now. So we'll look at how that changes is happening, right? So first of all, let us know what the name of this release is because we need that to upgrade it so i'll just copy over this name here then i'll do a helm upgrade i'll name the list this one i'll name the chart and i'll also name my file which is the kong values .yaml file right so this is the one or rather we can instead uninstall uh, our previous release here so let us just go over this part i'll just copy this thing and install here yeah, so it's uninstalled now. Now we can install again. And this time we'll use this particular file here. There you go. 
So now it's going to okay. We have to provide generic name here. And this is create a name for our release. So once this, so once this installs, we'll then look at and verify if the admin API is working or not. Yeah. So it's installed now. And now let's just get over and check if the service is deployed as now. Okay. Let's just see if it's there. Yeah, it's there. So you can see I have a Kong admin service now with the load balancer and which is external IP coming up and the port is 8001. Right, so that is HTTP port, and this is the HTTP port. And we also have Postgres because I also configured Postgres in my YAML file. So this is the idea. And for now, let's just again, you know, uninstall this release as well because I already have uh, deployed Kong in my names uh, in my cluster here using the YAML manifest method. So I already used that DPLS configuration, and I've already deployed a Kong, you know, inside my uh, cluster here. So I'll just un uninstall this one. So we have only one. Uh, just to work with. All right. Now let's just let's just go back to our uh, one note here. Yeah. So so we have seen how we can you know install Kong using Helm and using ML manifest. And now we can go over to see how we can configure Kong application in different ways. So you already know the one method which is the admin API. We can directly call the admin API and make changes, create objects, all of that. But since we're in a Kubernetes environment, what is recommended for us is to use CRDs. Now, what are CRDs? CRDs are custom resource definitions. So you may, you may be familiar with deployment, pods, and other so other objects which are present there by default in Kubernetes, right? So these are these are definitions which are provided by the community. And then you can instead create your own I don't know definitions like this. So if you want, you can create a custom kind. Uh, you know, for example, uh, say. I would want, I want to create I will have a new application and I want people to you know to be able to create an application just by creating an object of that way. So that is what CRDs are basically. So we have a CRD and you have a controller. So a controller monitors CRD objects. So if you create any object, any object of CRD and then that particular controller, the one which is associated with it, will observe any changes. So if it sees that a new CRD is created, it will then spin up whatever resources are required by your CRD. So that is the idea behind CRDs, it's a very short idea. And so what I'm saying is like what our method should be to create consumer service and routes that should be done using CRDs, right? So services can already be, uh, there's already a definition for services in Kubernetes, but other objects like consumers or routes, all those things need to be created using CRD, right? So that is one, that is one of the ways and the other part is the admin API. Of course, you can also use the admin API as we saw earlier in the hand chart. So these are two things and some important CRDs by Kong are Kong plugin and Kong consumer. So we'll look at them in the later stages when we are starting to implement the basic authentication plugin. Right, so that is that is that is how you implement it. You you define a Kong plugin uh, CRD for that. So that is that is the two different ways to configure Kong, and we'll go with the CRD option as of now. The next thing which you're going to look at is a Kubernetes ingress object. Now, why is why are we talking about a Kubernetes ingress object? Right. So first, let us go over to the documentation. Yeah. So this is the ingress. Uh, uh, this is ingress. Uh, documentation here. So what basically is Ingress? It allows you to route traffic to your services from external environment. So it is basically that. So you define, so let's just look at a uh, sample YAML first. It will be much, much better in understanding this way. So you specify some name and then you specify rules for routing. So let's just look at what rule there is right now. So there's an HTTP rule. It says that any, any uh, request which come to this particular path slash test path need to be routed to a service called test at port 80 right so this is the backend and this is the path and this path is kind of prefix so we'll look at what prefix means in the latest videos now so this is a very simple kind of ingress so it's just basically rules it is a static set of rules which which you define by yourself that okay whatever if if there is some request in the cluster which comes by this this particular endpoint then you need to route it to this service if, if it comes to this particular host you need to route it to this particular service so there are multiple options as well. so you can also specify hosts here in, in place of you know in addition to paths that's one other parameter that you can you know segregate your traffic i'm going to look at uh, that as well yeah, so this is the place where you can uh, understand what what i meant by prefix earlier so you can read this up and you know it will be much clearer that way but you can also add host names here as i told you earlier so maybe if you want you can add as a wildcard as well in place if you don't have a very specific host name so if you look at here you have a host name food.bar.com let's just try it out let's just see how how adding ingresses how creating ingresses how playing with ingresses work in, works in a community so i have an ingress yaml file here on my portal so look at let's look at what this thing means i have an ingress class name here 
So this tells me what controller this is associated to. As I already told you, ingress is just this this particular object is definition, is a static definition of rules that need to be enforced. Now who's going to enforce it? There needs to be some kind of a controller there, right? So Kong ingress controller is the one which is enforcing these rules and it will be monitoring these objects. So that is specified using the ingress class name here. You can have other class names depending on what controller you're using. So maybe Istio also has you know a controller here. So if you look at the rules. I have defined an HTTP rule which says that any request coming at the base URL, at the base path, will be forwarded to a service called Hello World at port number 80. So Hello World is an application I already have running and deployment and service. It's a very pretty basic Kubernetes Hello World application. So this is this is the very basic rule I have defined. Let's just check out and check out how we are going to you know be able to access this thing. So usually when whenever you're defining any kind of uh, ingress, in that case. If you are if you are specifying find a host, say if I am specifying any any particular host I want, that host should resolve to the IP address of my Kong ingress controller, right? So it should be addressed to the ingress controller's URL IP address, right? And then that is basically a load balancer. So what you have is something like, so what what it actually means is let me just you know draw it a bit. So what I meant was like we are also looking at say one kind of an ingress controller here. So this is this is any any ingress controller and it is exposed as some particular IP address, right? So any rules which you have defined here. So for example, if you have multiple ingress rules and if the if a request comes in which matches these rules, this needs to be forwarded to the IP address of this particular ingress controller. Now this basically is a load balancer. Right? It's a load balancer which will be balancing your requests into the multiple services which you defined. So we defined a hello world service port 80. So when a request comes in and matches this configuration, it gets forward to the IP address of this thing and then this load balancer will then forward it to the hello world application. This is how the system works. So let's just test this out on our own. Now I'll check out what that address is using get service. Okay, I'll have to do it using the Kong namespace in that case. We just do it using the Kong namespace. Because we saw that was the first thing we just created in the manifest, a namespace Kong. So we'll have to look at that. Yeah, so this is this is the Kong proxy and we can see there's an external IP called this thing which is exposed to port Now let's just visit uh, this URL and see uh, if you can access uh, the hello world application because this is just the BC URL which you're accessing. So you can see there's a hello world URL right there. Right, so this is this is the idea behind uh, using ingress. So I was just I was just using this particular address. So if I had defined other rules like slash some other you know kind of uh, uh, route and forward it to some other service, then it would have opened that particular service. This is kind of a load balance here. So that is implementing a very basic kind of uh, ingress. Now let's just play around with something on the ingress. Let me let me modify it a bit. So if I have a path here, I can you know remember I can also add a host in this case. Yeah. So let's just add a host. Let's just see if I can add a host here. All right, and now I'll apply it. So maybe I'll apply the ingress again. So this will update my ingress with the new host parameter. Okay, there's a problem here. Unknown field host. I think this, this uh, let me just recheck what it was. Uh, rules, the host has to be applied in the other section. I made a mistake in the indentation. So let's just modify it again. There you go. So I have made that change now. And let's apply it again and see if it works this time. Yeah, it is configured now. Right, so now let us try accessing this website again. See, there's a say says no route matched with those value, right? Because you have not specified the host. If you're not using the host in the header, that is this request will not go to the particular service. It won't be routed to a service. Right. So that is that is one of the changes we can do. Um that is all for this particular section. Let's just go back to our OneNote. Yeah, so we have covered we have covered how routes are similar to ingress and how we defined routes in Kong using ingress object. So you saw we defined an ingress object and we specified uh, some rules there and it acted as a Kong route in itself, right? So that is that is how Kong routes behave in Kubernetes environment. And we also played around with adding hosts and stuff. So you can you know make other changes as well. You can have multiple other backends as well. You can have a default backend which which is the one which is used when there are no routes being managed. So that is that is the idea behind using Kubernetes ingresses Kong routes. Now, once all of that is familiar to you, now let us start talking about the basic authentication plugin. Because now, since we you looked at, uh, we have accessed the website and external IP and it did not ask us for any credentials. It just opened the Hello World application there. Right. So we have to find out ways in which we can secure our service. 
secure the hello world service from being exposed so directly so now this is something which we can use which is the yeah, which, which is the simple authentication using a password and a username right so this is very basic this is this is nothing which has you know any sorts of keys involved or external you know, authentication providers this is very basic username slash password store so let's just look at first of all documentation yes yeah, so this is documentation and you can see it says it's partially compatible with dbds mode so it works with dbds mode is what it's saying so we don't need to have a database provision in order to use this particular plugin now it has multiple ways in which you can you know apply this plugin so as you can see there's always the admin api route you can you can post a request to the admin api at the what what particular service do you want to implement that plugin to and then you can you can start off you know using that uh, using the basic authentication in that particular service you can also apply it on a route again using the same way but we are using kubernetes so let's just check out what it holds for kubernetes as i told you that we can use a custom you know resource definition in kubernetes to define plugins and other objects that we're doing right here so we're using a kong plugin crd and we are defining a plugin which says what name it is and what plugin it is actually it is the basic authentication plugin so you can have any name you want and then a basic authentication plugin so i already implemented that here so let's just look at you know k describe i think i don't remember the name exactly of what plugin i'm using but let's just see uh basic auth oh it's not there so let's just see get get um, plugin yeah so i have an example plugin and it has type of basic also this is which i already deployed here which is very simple one yeah and now what we can do is like if you want to apply it to a service you go to your service manifest so you have a service yaml file like that you just have to add an annotation here so the annotation is kong headquarters.com slash plugins and whatever the name of your you know, plugin is that is the only modification that you have to do so let's just see if i have a modification made on my uh, particular service so let us see what file i have and now let me go over to my hello world file. so yeah i have an example plugin specified as a uh, part of this annotation here so this will tell count that you have to secure this particular service right so so let's just go over to the website again and see if we can access it like before so let me just put in here the particular url there you go so you have now restrictions on who can access your website and who can access that service of yours and you have to provide a username and a password just like you wanted right okay let's go back to the one notes we have you know completed this step as well yeah so this is done basically we need to begin we know what it is like how it is set up you have to declare a conf plugin object you have to add the annotation to your service or you can do it to your route as well same thing and then you can check if you can access your service like that so that is that is that's one part here now in order to access this service as you know we need a username and a password but how how do we get those things how do we mention it to com that okay this is a username and a password that you should know to allow into the service so we have to register some sort of credentials with kong as well right so how do you do that you use it you use a crd called kong consumer so we already uh, mentioned about kong plugin and kong consumer being two crds by kong which are really important so kong consumer is how you define your consumer and so we define a kong consumer and then we add some credentials to it let's just go to the portal back again and let's see now i already have a consumer.yaml file which i have built before so you can see i have a kong consumer here which has a name wj and i have provided a username as wj so this is this is defining a user with a username now this doesn't have any credentials of its own right so you you can see there's no credentials here correct so how how do we add credentials to this and how do we add a password to it that can be done using a secret so what i'll do is i'll create a secret as well so this is this is just a setting up of consumer then you add a secret to it so you can create a secret right from uh, the current the generic way of doing it so which is you can do create generic secret and then you can specify the name of your secret and then the type of secret which you create so this a concrete type will basically this is the key value pair which i'm talking about here and then you can provide a username and a password here so this is a secret which you created now after the secret gets created already i think i have created right because it already exists right so it already is created so after i've created a secret i have to add the secret to my consumer so what i'm going to do is i'll go back to my uh, consumer.yaml file here Oh, this is wrong. Mm. I'll go to my consumer.yaml file. This is the one. Yeah. So there will be a credential section here, and now this credentials will hold some kind of uh, secret name. 
this is look at this particular section yeah so this is a section which tells us how to create uh, consumer in the first place and this is the how you add a credentials so you add a credentials and then you specify what is the secret that you want right so what i'll do is i'll go over here credentials and then just you know specify the name of the secret which is w jesh yeah which is i think it is count w jesh key here yeah. so let us modify to that there you go so once that is done i made the change to the consumer now i'm going to apply this change and then we look at how we can access our application using this thing so let's just go over to the uh, url here so now i'll just sign in using my uh, password which was just pass if you had noticed that yeah there you can see let's just try to access it now there you go it's again visible now so that is that is how you add consumers and then you access your services so you can add multiple consumers add more secrets and credentials and this is how this entire thing goes off now let us go back to our section and see if we have anything left yeah so this is this is what you have done so we have created a consumer object we have created credentials as commit a secret we have assigned those credentials to the com consumer object and you use them to log into your service right so that is that is how we have done it and looking ahead uh, like i mentioned there are multiple other plugins which you can have so the basic authentication plugin is one of the plugins which you use it's very simple you know Username and password kind of system, but you can also have other plugins. You can explore those plugins. Oh, 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 these plugins also there inside. So you can check those plugins out and explore on your own. And then you can understand user flows because this is a very simple flow. You can have multiple other flows like exchange of tokens and stuff like that. That is something you can explore on your own and see if it fits your cause. And that is all for this video. In the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to deploy an Azure API management service. Like we talked about Azure Azure API management a long time back in the previous videos, I think. and then we going to in the next video we going to see how we actually deploying such a service and again we'll also add authentication to it using azure ad which is active directory right so this is something we should look at in the next video i hope to see you there and i really hope that this was really a uh, useful and fruitful session for you and you understood how you can you know set up a very basic secure service using kong api gateways right thank you so much for watching